Hey, it's Coach Indoor with Tactical Hive. And today we're gonna to talk about, well, we're gonna go along our, our series, I guess, on uh, the evolution of gear. And today's subject is gonna be the chest rig. Yeah, we're gonna start with the very humble beginnings of the early Cold War Chicom rigs and work our way through what we use during our careers and a little bit of what they've got in the present to offer. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so we're back. And like Coach said, it's all about chest rigs. We're gonna start off from the beginning. And for us, coming from the Naval Special Warfare side, we consider that the Vietnam War. Um, it was during that conflict that our guys were able to develop and perfect the ability to run and gun, basically. Mm -hmm. So just to be clear, I was not in Vietnam, all right? I mean, I got old face, but I started my career in 1986. So the guys, a lot of the guys um, that trained me, put me through buds, were Vietnam vets. And the majority of the, the, the higher ups, the headshed guys, uh, when I got to SEAL Team 5, were all Vietnam guys. So the, the Vietnam tactics and hell, the gear hadn't changed very much. So when we started out in buds, uh, we trained with the good old LC1 Alice gear, you know, kind of combat harness. And hell, I think you that's what you had yep. in, in buds too. So Same you, thing. You don't get the cutting edge stuff when you start going through training. Uh, my first few deployments, I was still on that LC1, you know, Alice gear type stuff. When I got to Damneck in 1995, that's when we started, you know, expanding you know starting looking into chest rig type stuff okay now the guys in vietnam if they were carrying an ak or an sks or whatever they were rolling with they would you know it's, it's easier to adopt something like this because okay so this one's for an sks you know these are the the chai com you know which chinese communists which was coming down the ho chi minh trail and flooding into the battle space that was south vietnam and these things are awesome you know, they, they hold tight to the chest, they keep the, the, the weight off your hips. Keep All of our guys of water, were living waiting. in that web gear world. So the SKS rig, this one is configured a little bit differently. It's a reproduction, but a lot of the rigs back then, you could fit the old stubby M16 mags into these pouches and you could go all the way across. And there's photographic evidence of our guys and maybe some of the other units that were like us that would go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. um, and, there you go. And then as the AKs uh, came more and more in, online, you saw guys taking these, and like before with the M56, M14 pouches for the magazines, mm -hmm. they'd have to put something down in the bottom of them so that these much, mm -hmm. much smaller M16 mags would fit properly. So again, guys would just either have these sewn or they would stuff stuff down on the bottom to accommodate 30 round, 30 round magazines. So as you can see, it sinks down below so they could come up with some kind of mag pull, mm -hmm. early mag pull um, evolution, or you, you I think more common. Dog ear, tape dog ear. Was, yeah, was 550 working. cord. Yeah. But I, I don't well, know. You can also shove like a uh, uh, pressure dressing yeah. underneath there. So I mean, something you're gonna use. Anything. For you our guys who are constantly getting wet, it ended up being like wood, bamboo, like things that weighed nothing but wouldn't get just soggy and destroyed. Space. Or you go to your, your parachute rigger and have them just run a line across here, so yeah. you just got empty. Uh, and they just had mama sons. I don't think yeah. they had parachute <laughs> riggers back then. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the first earliest um, use of Rhodesians for on our side for our guys. And then they, as the war progressed, they got more creative. They started having mama so additional pockets, instead of having three, you might get six on there, you know, with double pouches. It just depended on the individual. None of this stuff was standardized. Guys were just kind of making it up as they went. This is a reproduction of a purpose-built Rhodesian. This, I, I thought for the longest time, this thing was actually made overseas, but it's not, it's made by Eagle. And as you can see, it's a more modern version. It's got Velcro, it's got a fast tech, but this, and I found this thing like, in the dermo bin ready to go to the trash <laughs> but it's extremely minimalist it's just made out of um, 
material you'd find in any airloft as far as the straps. This uh, material is made out of, you know, a duffel bag, sea bag material. It's got the uh, drain holes. So this is probably a 90s version of what guys were using in Vietnam. This is my favorite chest rig, my favorite Rhodesian. I got it not long after I checked into my first team. And uh, it's, it's really the reason I didn't use a lot of the other ones I got issued, because I just like this one better. Hey, it's got everything you need, nothing you don't, right? Yeah, definitely. But uh, that was kind of the humble beginnings. And then as you did see, as the war progressed, you did see guys just having uh, custom made chest rigs made specific, specifically for them, either mm -hmm. stateside or the, uh, the Mama Sam seamstresses. Seamstresses? Seamstresses <laughs> uh, in Taylors. country. Tailors. And they, they were good at it. A uh, buddy of ours, a guy that uh, Coach used to work for very early in his career, and a guy I had the honor of working with uh, towards the end of mine, a guy named Chuck, he still has his chest rig from Nam that he ran his car 15 with. We gotta get Chuck in one. Oh, we, are, we gotta get him on here. We yeah. gotta get him on. He's, 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 just, he's awesome. He's one of the coolest people I've ever met. <laughs> Anywho, back to r chest rigs. Um, Fast forward, like Coach, I think you had alluded to, chest rigs really weren't a thing at your team. Yeah, I mean, for the longest time, you didn't have, it was just the, the LC1 stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, when we started doing CQB, that's when, you know, that combat vest idea, when you had your nine mil mags, you know, they were on the, uh, just a vest on top of your, your body armor. And then that kind of trans started to translate over and the guy started like, hey, I'd like this, you know, let's set it up like that, you know? Yeah. Um, so we started running, uh, you know, just, you know, either body armor, if you're going to run body armor. We didn't run body armor unless we were doing CQB. Yeah. Outside, it, you just didn't do it. But as that assaulter, you know, more modern skill set evolved, you know, guys were running, you know, in the early days, the standalone plate carriers. This is an earlier version. How long have you had this one? This is a, this thing is old. That's a 90s. late 90s. Yeah, 90s, London Bridge, standalone plate carrier. Basically. And the idea behind these is you just run whatever uh, chest rig or vest. The Blackhawk vests were real yeah. popular for a long time. Uh, we got another version right here. This one actually has plates in it. Uh, does this one predate this one? That's yeah, well, it's about the same time. This one's got the uh, actually, yeah, I think it might be a little bit older. I think it's the same maker. Okay. But it's got the old steel mm -hmm. plates in here. Yeah. You know, little flanges on the side. You know, the you know Mark One motto, chicken plate. And we I'm covered uh, plate carriers in depth in two other videos. You can go ahead and check those out. But wearing the you know the the plates over the top of the chest rig is definitely an option. It was a. Uh, Popular there for a while early on in GWAT. I, I know a lot of guys did it, but it kind of faded off as it got, I did it occasionally, got depending on what you know the mission set. If you had a, if you were changing gear a lot, uh, then yeah, if you just had your body armor and then you're gonna be a breacher one day and appointment in another day, then you mm -hmm. carry different stuff, yeah. you know. So, so this isn't really a chest rig, but it's kind of it, it goes into the evolution, all right. So, this. I think this one's a London Bridge as well. But the idea was you could tighten this up here. So it's basically, it becomes a chest rig. You know, mm -hmm. you just pull it in nice and tight. You got all your mags up front and then all the stuff, you know, the extra stuff there. And you could still open this up. Idea was that when you want to get really close to the ground, like when people are lobbing you know, mortars at you, you want to be as close to the ground as you possibly can. And you don't want to be laying on a bunch of stuff leaving yourself up, you want to keep this to the side and get really low. So we were still kind of, you know, working that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we'd been issued the uh, the, the first MLCS kits. Um, and one of the, the, the things that came in the kit was this Rhodesian. Uh, now this is a Rhodesian vest. I got it set up, you have a little bib here because you could put yeah, uh, admin stuff. This has got a little uh, signaling panel in it. A lot of times I had a small set of uh, binoculars I'd drop in there so I could, you know, you know, look at something far away without actually, you know, bringing a, an optic up and looking like you're, you know, being uh, aggressive. But you got uh, this one set up for my, my scar right now. So it's got the uh, 762 mags across the front. And then you could put all kinds of, you know, you had these, these wings here, right? So always have your knife. Normally I had a radio right here. Don't have any radios uh, that fit this anymore. And then, uh, you know, little multi-tool pouch. And if you had to, you know, this came along a little bit later before we had it just sewn on here. This was your, if you, 
especially in Afghanistan, you don't want to be, have anything hanging on your uh, your hips as much as possible. So you want to mount as much on your shoulders, so it would be hanging off of here, and that's where you put your pistol. So there was a soft pouch in here initially, and then we moved to the uh, the Safari Land. Uh, what what the hell is this? The ACLF or A? The quick yeah, release. That's universal. You can pretty much most holsters yeah. are compatible with it now. So but yeah, this is definitely a modern there, yeah. upgrade. Yeah, I mean, I just crazy. used a mag pouch. Yeah, yeah, so did I. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but when you can, you upgrade. You make you know make things better. Uh, this one here, I set up. It, it came with um, in the back a little uh, place here, and a yeah, uh, this bounce is going on this bungee a little bit. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, you could put a, a plate carrier in front, and then I attached my camel back to the back, and then I would run not only water on here, but I had a uh, spine plate that would slide down in here. So it was about as, as lightweight armor as you could get. And let me tell you, uh, those hot mountains, boy, uh -huh. that'll save your life. If you wear too much stuff, you're too wrapped up, you're gonna be a heat casualty, uh, you know, faster than you're gonna, you know, have to worry, you won't have to worry about getting shot. Yeah, the ounces do equal pounds, and then, you know, being able to just cool off uh, the, uh, that, Kevlar wrap that they would issue that thing kept you warm in the the winter time but in the summertime it could kill you <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know it could literally kill you yeah We're so more than a couple guys fall out because of heat oddly enough this was the first Rhodesian I was ever issued so going through buds it was kind of standard plain Jane Alice mm -hmm. web gear and then in SQT we started getting issued the more Gucci aftermarket Blackhawk London Bridge additions to the Alice gear but it still was that Alice system, that you know LBE harness system. It wasn't until you got to the team that you were issued this MLCS kit, and yeah, this Rhodesian came in it. I, I think ran it about the same. I kept my knives on my belt back then. I think I had a fourth magazine pouch on the right side that could double as a holster if needed, or I could run the eight mags or whatever it was. Yeah, there was actually a specialized pouch that yeah. could be it either was. There was. mag or the, or, the, or the gun. Well, they, they got, issued a holster, an MLCS pouch holster. Nobody used it. Yeah, well, and, it, it um, doubled as, as, a, as a mag pouch, and that's yeah. what I had on there okay. uh, for a couple of ops uh, yeah. in Afghanistan. So I just so. ran the four double mag pouches for M4, and I think you get a single 7.62 mag in there. Mm -hmm. And then I would, as needed, I would use it as a holster. Um, I did not hard mount a Camelback bladder to it because I just used so many different rigs back then that I wanted it to be standalone because I was an A-dub a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I had a different mobility for a crewing vehicle or as an assaulter. I could use the Rhodesian, but I had a, an assaulter loadout as well. I do. I use the ammo, the admin pouch, just like you did. A lot of guys would fold them down and just not worry about it. You know, to each their own. Mm -hmm. But it was a great piece of kit. You know, we've talked about how incredibly durable this generation of Molly equipment was. I mean, I ran mine through two full deployment training cycles, and uh, I ended up giving it away to my new guys because they needed stuff to beat up on. But um, anyway, it was still good to go, and uh, it, it worked out really well. Um, now, after I got done with this one, when, when you look, guys look yeah. at this and go, oh, you only got three mags in there. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. You got three, four mags. Now, if this was uh five, five, six, you could double these up. You could have six mags up here. But honestly, mm -hmm. most of the time I ran three. These are the three that I have two on my gun and then these three. So that's five mags that I could get to really easily. Now, what this doesn't show on here is I can throw a backpack with extra stuff on, mm -hmm. on, that, on that I can take off and leave this on me. So I still have my protection. You know, I was never big on, on putting a lot of stuff in a backpack that was, that was mounted to your kit because you'd have to take your kit off to get it or have your buddy, you know, grab your you know, item mm -hmm. out, right? So this is, you could augment this easily with, you know, just a, a smaller backpack, a little day pack, mm -hmm. you know? So before you get in the comments about, oh yeah, you got you know, three mags, whatever. No, you could expand this with a backpack. You know, I never got anything, you know, too busy where I couldn't solve it with uh, mm -hmm. the, the mags on my front. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll be getting into backpacks here in future videos, but uh, did you ever put anything in this besides a water? Did you ever, 
you know, because it has the ability to open up. Did you ever use it for anything no, else? No, this was no? two things I had in here was the spine plate mm -hmm. and then the water bladder. Okay. And I really didn't need anything else in there. I didn't feel like, you know, doing this to get to it. You know, so I, yeah, just water and, uh, okay. and armor. It's all you needed. Right on. And we pretty much had it very similar. Um, did you use... Any other Rhodesians before retirement? No, nah, pretty no. much. This this was this is the Rhodesian. You know, we went to the full mm -hmm. rig. Um, you know, with the uh, the plate carrier, and we've already you know gone over those. Mm -hmm. um, but you know that that was between this and that plate carrier. Uh, that that took me through my pretty much the end of my operational uh, time. During your time at Warcom, when you were in the N8, which is gear, weapons mm -hmm. um, development and appropriation for the community, was there any other, I know this big massive MLCS kit was the yeah. law of the land at group well, one, two, and three. Okay, yeah, but see that was, there's a little separate. I was N3, mm -hmm. which is guns. Oh, you're just and guns. Bullets. Okay, my and, bad. And, uh, and night vision, fast stuff, okay? So okay. all this was happening somewhere else and I didn't have time to monitor this. So okay. it, it, it grew a life of its own. You know, I think the, the bag, the last bag I remember uh, being quoted for all this stuff was like 10 grand that they were throwing at everybody. It had so many freaking pouches in it. Yeah. It, and that you never used. I mean, you know, but you're responsible for them. So when you, you know, you left, you had to turn them back in or whatever, a lot of them still in the damn plastic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a new guy, as the system was coming online, I mean, I used every kind of weapon system. I tried to, you know, get my, get in there and find a way to do every single kind of job from assistant breacher, assistant sniper, you know, I use submachine guns, battle rifles, sniper rifles, machine guns, grenade launchers. And I went through most of that kit, but by, by definitely I was the exception. Like new guys have that luxury, you know, of, oh, yeah. of kind of being a squire and, you know, trying to learn all the jobs. But the middle rung and especially the headshed guys, they didn't use that stuff, you know? A freaking leadership isn't putting on A-dub gear, you no, know? Like no. Their job, I mean, so... Ryan Zinke, he was uh, my uh, the team leader when I was on Gold Squadron there for a while. He would he's a big guy, and he would carry a bunch of extra magazines. And he's like, dude, these are not for me. These are for you, because if I've got to use them, we're in this shit. Okay, so that was uh, his idea, and he never wore anything else. He just wore that rig mm -hmm. with, geez, I mean, he probably had ten, twelve magazines yeah. in there, and yeah. Never used a one of them, but he handed them out. <laughs> right on. So that's a good leader right there. So he's actually yeah. giving you what you need with your bullets <laughs> to kill people. <laughs> In a certain certain situation. Yeah, the right people. You know, maybe it's uh, leniency. Like Dirty, right, Dirty Harry said. Tonight you know? I need, today I need leniency, but maybe tomorrow I'm going to need a couple of those mags, you know? Yeah. Just, just be there for me, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Nothing wrong with shooting people as long as the right people get shot. Right? That's, uh, that's always the goal. Um, so moving on past this one, mm -hmm. um, I'd seen guys with this. This is, I believe, a, uh, a London Bridge. This is kind of more of the browner gold, well, you know, so browner this color. Was the, on, this is the first issue uh, when I was mm -hmm. in Amnex, so late 90s, uh, early 2000s, mm -hmm. pre-war. Uh, and then, and at the same time, they, you guys had something like this, right? That was right. So I had this kit for. Uh, four years, two full cycles mm -hmm. before I ever got this. I picked this one up actually when I was at the center after that second platoon. And I'd seen guys with these. This is kind of a generic one piece um, London Bridge. You've got your eight rifle mags, these two kind of little admin pouches. You could run dual comms on it. It was an awesome one piece rig. I did have other kind of dermo rigs that I'd use for this or that, but I didn't use them very much and nor do I know where that what happened to them. But this is a great Rhodesian and then future generations of stuff I used um, were based on this. Uh, this is a one piece, it doesn't have a zipper down the middle, but the next generation uh, did. So this is, I set this one up in a very similar fashion but it did have some stuff that this one did not. Notice, notice the uh, camo pattern changed. So yeah. You got the little yeah. guacamoles came in. Yeah. And everything was uh, was this color. For so you could unzip this one and you could put it on similar to that uh, kit that you used. And as a, a recce sniper uh, role, you definitely want to be able to unzip 
and unclip what's on your chest. Because as coach said before, laying prone with this stuff is terrible. And if you are in fact taking effective fire, you cannot get low enough. And that's why as soon as like an infantry unit stops, they dig in, you know, cause they never know when they're gonna get hit. Um, we generally don't stay in one spot for very long, but um, you definitely, if you're going to be laying prone for any reason, being able to open this up, get as close to the ground, as flat, I mean, you're going to be more comfortable and more as a pretty much a more effective shooter. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, you know, another advantage that something like this might have, mm -hmm. if you're doing river and stream crossing and bad stuff happens, you can slip out of that a whole lot faster than you could this. You know, it doesn't have to come over your head. Yeah. You zip it and let it go. You know, and, deal and, with that. and really, you know, yeah, it's a great example of when you need to get light, you know, as you're drowning, drowning sucks. but. I mean, yeah, yeah, it does. just being able to take this off, you know, you're gonna have it right next to you, right next to your weapon, you know, you're in the field, but just being able to get that the mags, the frags, the all of the weight on what is known as your second line gear, just being able to take it off for a little while, take it off while you're sleeping. Or just open it up to get some air in there. I mean, yeah. you can't do that with one of these. You're, you know, and when it's cold, great, but when it's hot, holy crap, mm -hmm. you wanna get that, you know, surface area, get that funk out of there. And if it's a, a quick in and out, you know, one cycle of darkness type operation, you know, I probably wouldn't worry about a chest rig. I'd probably be running a plate carrier. But if it's a multi-day um, endurance run, running that standalone plate carrier, again, here's just a couple of examples. This is a very light, uh, very light one, pro, very man. small, low pro. And this is a more purpose built for combat operations. Just having this on, maybe even attaching my comms onto here because you always need it. Um, but, but then just being able to take this all this weight off, it really helps um, for those prolonged uh, types of operations. <laughs> you just take a look at it. Yeah. I haven't messed with this one, but holy crap, that is so much nicer yeah. than <laughs> that thing that I got is huge. I mean, look at this, look at that. That actually looks like it might be comfortable on your shoulders. Yeah. No this way. Is, uh, Pussy. Uh, this is Ranger Green. Um, <laughs> SOCOM just probably bought a bazillion of these yeah. as they wanted them, and then we ended up just getting them and I barely ever used it. I, I, we had brown ones and tan ones that I did use, but this is, you know. Yeah, compared, again, compared to that chicken if you're gonna run chest there, rigs, guys, um, you know, for all the reasons we're talking about, if you, you run a lot of different types of platforms or you do wanna be able to have your armor but be able to take the some of that second line gear ammunition type weight off, you know, these standalone plickers are cheap, you know, they're durable and uh, it's a great option, great option. Uh, moving on, so kind of seeing these larger, more purpose-built Rhodesians. I did use both of these rigs because I needed all the pockets and all the pouches. Um, if I wasn't using these, I would, again, I would just go back, go back to, here. to this one. This super streamlined, super easy uh, Rhodesian. It fits great in a backpack. And you've got these two pistol mag pouches on the sides. I could put pistol mag pouch, pistol mags in those, but honestly, like Leatherman and a small flashlight usually yep. went in there. That would, that makes more sense. Honestly. Yeah, because I've already got my pistol on my belt with my mags, and um, that's generally how I ran it. You know, a Leatherman, a flashlight, four mags, and I would just keep it with, you know, my ten inch or whatever in that semi permissive. Grab and go. Permissive. You know, something happens, bump in the night. Yeah, throw that on. Go yeah, take care of business. By far, best one. It is made by Eagle. I have no idea what the uh, model is. Again, I found this in a one of those hotel laundry hampers full of gear. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah. It's called dumpster diving. People. Yeah, it's, all, and, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a tried and true tradition. Mm, and some of the do it. coolest stuff that you find is stuff that somebody didn't use yeah. or didn't want anymore. Upgraded. But, I don't want this. Throws it in the... The Dermo bin. Yeah, yeah. And, and then it was perfect timing because all of this new modern GWAT stuff was coming out and everybody wanted the new cool stuff. They didn't want the new old because it wasn't retro yet. We've covered that in previous videos. Not, not everybody's a pack rat like yeah. you and me. Yeah. Also, yeah, there's that. Kendrick. <laughs> yeah. We both uh, we both like keep on everything. It's, it's a disease. This is a disorder. Okay. Sorry. So moving on. If you can't find the super small, um, old school type Rhodesian, the modern stuff is out there. And I got a whole bunch of them. I actually did use this rig. Um, I, had, I just had more mag pouches on this side, but it has two pistol mag pouches here on the left, uh, three submachine gun pouches. So this is for your MP5 or seven, 
Uh, they both will fit in each other's mm -hmm. pouches to an extent, as long as they're the, uh, the bungee cloth type. If you're gonna go with these fast quick draw plastic insert types, they do make those Some, you know, for the seven. I don't think I've ever seen them for the, for the five. Yeah, but it would, like when you roll it here, uh, Sig mags mm -hmm. fit really great in there, and Glock mags are just get jammed up. Right, so you can't put Glock. You got to make sure that the, you, the the pouches that you're using, uh, you know, work for the the mags yeah. that you're using. So these definitely worked for both five and seven. Uh, this is purpose built, I think, for a seven. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So. And then on this side, if I was using it, I just put additional magazines on there. Um, and it was just that, ammo only. And it was low visibility and you kept it, you know, with your backpack, you maybe have your uh, your your 10 inch or your whatever you want to call it, Mark 18, mm -hmm. and your shorty suppressed primary gun. You'd have that with your backpack. You'd have this attached to the backpack and you're just on base or whatever, traveling on aircraft, things like that. You'd have your pistol on you. Yeah. You're not um, always, you know, yeah. prepped for the big mish, you know? Exactly. It's like, but, you know, bad stuff happens. So you got to be ready and, you know, you have to be able to, uh, to you know, size your gear mm -hmm. to, you know, even the threat, you know? You walk around uh, on base, you know, overseas, you still had to be armed. Yeah. Here's another example of uh, a more modern kit that, you know, I never used this once because I, I love that old... Woodland one, mm -hmm. and uh, but this is another one. It's got the molly on it. It's, it's really just three mags, and you can put a little bit more on it if you wanted to. Um, great kit. This is kind of probably what you're going to find more if you go looking for these super low pro. But yeah, the modularity these days has just gone off the charts. You know, I mean, you can configure these. You, can, you know, who makes this one? Is this a? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Eagle London. Yeah, Bridge this is a more of a big kit. You know, They're either London Bridge kit. or Eagle. I mean, back in the old days, you used to have to, you know, buy the uh, parachute rigger, a bunch of beer, and he'd sew up your stuff. Right? Yeah. Now, you know, I think the parachute riggers, you know, would go on strike if they knew this was going to happen. Yeah, and then team guys, some team guys, guys, some team guys go to the para rigger school. Oh, yeah. So you'll yeah. run into team guys that are awesome at making stuff, and that's, that's definitely the way to go. It uh, Definitely the way to do it. The um, At the play carrier video, we talked about how I put my standalone together. And at first I, I used like just rigorous tape and Velcro. Mm -hmm. And I remember that that play carrier was stolen. So the one that I had was a stand -in. I actually did have the rigger put the plate, put it in there eventually. I think it was for more for my second deployment. But anyway, this is another example of um, a Rhodesian. And then you can buy the ultra, <laughs> ultra low viz. The blank slate. Where it's yeah. literally, it has these, th it has some, Velcro pouches, I guess you could do something with, but really you're just going to molly whatever you want onto here, you know, form fit it to yourself and it's completely an empty, you know, slate, empty canvas. Yeah. Uh, you, you start looking at the, uh, the thickness of the material. Mm -hmm. Unless when you go back to here, it's like, you know, oh, look at that. You know, this is made to last a long time and to carry a lot of weight. This one here is made to last one deployment but you know what they last a whole lot longer than that this ballistic uh yeah, nylon is, is amazing incredibly stuff. durable it, you know all the extra weight and just material that we were rolling around with compared to you know what's available now is mm -hmm. insane but yeah you can set this up however you want and you know to your threat level to your mission whatever that is uh that's that's pretty bitching outstanding yeah never use this one either yeah <laughs> And then uh, last but not least, we have kind of what, what I think would be the most modern yeah, uh, offering. Uh, in a previous video, you showed your uh, your old rig and mm -hmm. people, hey, what rig is that? That would be great, it'd be perfect. Now, I don't know anybody who makes that one anymore. Nope. But uh, old Blue Force Gear makes these, this 10 speed rig and it's 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 pretty nice. Uh, they, they make them for different sized uh, magazines, but it's basically the same thing as uh, Doors old rig. Uh, except you have to molly on, you know, pouches mm -hmm. here, which, you know, may be a benefit, maybe not. Uh, and, okay, so they've got the elastic pouches here, which are pretty easy to take stuff out of. Get them in, it's kind of, can be kind of a pain in the ass. And you don't want to leave them loaded all the time because they'll take a set. So you want to leave this open, but it would fill the same niche that that, that one, you know, filled. Mm -hmm. uh, it's It's purpose-built 
It's as low profile as you can get. There's very little fabric on either side. Um, you know, so you're, you can be as, as, uh, as streamlined as possible with, uh, with something like this. Cool. Well, guys, um, you know, that was just our quick take on chest rigs, um, where, you know, kind of how they started, a little bit of the development and then our experiences with them. As far as the real world stuff, uh, the play carriers, you know, purpose built play carriers were definitely reign supreme. And then, um, obviously if I was running an A-dub and yeah, that's a completely different yeah. Uh, type of system, but you know, we did use Rhodesians a little bit here and there. We continue to use them as we teach. And uh, you know, if you don't have one and you want to, you know, take a look, the Blue Force Gear makes great stuff. Um, there's a lot of great companies out there, mm -hmm. but it all comes down to personal preference and just what's going to work for you. Yeah, and you can go big and heavy and load a lot mm -hmm. of crap on, or you can go as light as possible, mm -hmm. or somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. So, hey guys, if you like this content, like, subscribe. Leave us some comments. All right. This is uh, Coach and Door out. <laughs>